Hello, and welcome to the second session in our nutrition education series for people living with diabetes. This session is intended to support people with diabetes to assess and understand their relationship with food and how to heal that relationship if necessary. Registered Dietitian and Ellen Satter Institute faculty member Sandy Maxwell will outline what a positive relationship with food is, how eating competence can play a role, and how to achieve non-weight related food and health goals. Take it away, Sandy. Hello, and thanks for joining our discussion today. I'll be going over what it means to have a positive relationship with food, how to be competent with your eating, and how your relationship with food supports wellness. If some of these concepts and terms are unfamiliar to you, not to worry, I will be explaining them. My hope is that you will gain some new information about eating that will benefit you while living with diabetes. Let's start by looking at what it means by having a positive relationship with food. For one thing, you feel good about eating. You enjoy food and feel comfortable eating with others. You look forward to eating rather than being filled with worry. You take an interest in food, even unfamiliar foods. At the same time, you give yourself permission to eat familiar foods that you enjoy. You eat to satisfy your hunger. You go along with your natural desire to eat enough of food that you enjoy rather than fighting against it. You feed yourself regularly and reliably. Because you enjoy food and feel comfortable with eating, it is rewarding to make feeding yourself a priority. So would you say that you currently have a positive relationship with food? Or do you often worry about your eating and or your weight? Do you feel happy when you eat so-called good foods and guilty when you eat so-called bad foods? Do you try to eat less than you're hungry for, or do you worry that if you eat certain foods, you might not stop? Almost everyone can answer yes to at least one of these questions. In today's world, feeling conflicted and anxious about eating is so common that it may seem the way it's supposed to be, but it isn't and doesn't have to be that way for you, even while living with diabetes. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of eating competence as the way to have a positive relationship with food. This approach is proven to work, including for people living with diabetes. Eating competence, as defined by the Satter Eating Competence Model, is being positive, comfortable, and flexible with eating, as well as matter of fact and reliable about getting enough to eat of personally enjoyable, nourishing food. People who are eating competent have better diets, better metabolic profiles, including blood sugars, more positive quality of life indicators, and are more active. I'm going to walk through the basic steps towards eating competence. Many people are able to follow the steps on their own. However, others need more support. If that's you, not to worry. I'll talk a bit more about that later. The first step toward eating competence is to feed yourself faithfully. Reassure yourself you will be fed and that you will get to eat food you genuinely enjoy. Develop a meal and snack routine that works for you. Take time to sit down to eat. Eating is more enjoyable when you allow time to eat and pay attention to your eating. Having a consistent pattern of meals and snacks supports you in taking care of yourself with food. Knowing when you'll be fed can increase your peace and comfort. It can also let you forget about between meal and snack times eating. This structure is especially important while living with diabetes as it helps to reduce the highs and lows of blood sugars throughout the day. Give yourself permission to eat a variety of foods, including foods you truly enjoy. Don't let your eating competence be spoiled by lists of good foods and bad foods. All foods nourish your body and have nutritional value, protein, energy, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. 
Even foods with added sugar can be included in your meals and snacks. In fact, doing this often enough can help you relax about the impact they may have on your blood sugar. Another step in developing eating competence is to connect with your eating. Connecting with your eating will transform it. It's about getting in touch with your inner self, which knows how to eat. This involves taking time to pause, breathe, and say to yourself, it's all right to eat, I just have to pay attention. As you connect with your eating, ask yourself, what am I experiencing while I eat? At first, you may get self-talk that interferes with connecting. You may worry about what or how much to eat or whether giving yourself permission will affect your weight. That self-talk gets in the way of your knowing what goes on inside you, your hunger, appetite, and feelings of reward and satisfaction from eating. As time goes on, you'll be less bothered by that self-talk and more and more be tuned into your inner self while you eat. The payoff is that you may feel more comfortable about providing yourself with food. You may feel better about your eating, calmer or more tuned in. You'll also want to trust your body to know how much to eat and to eat what is good for you. Say to yourself, it's all right to eat, I just need to pay attention. Trying to ignore and outwit your body lets you feel only the strongest feelings, being famished or being stuffed. At first, you may not feel hungry when you start on the road to eating competence, or you may not feel full when you stop. If you stay the course, your hunger rhythms will adjust to your eating pattern. Then you will re recover more subtle feelings, maybe a twinge of hunger, maybe a bit of fullness. Your feelings of hunger and fullness will get stronger. Then you will rediscover your stopping place. One quick note about weight. If you deprive yourself in an effort to keep your weight down, you will gain it back. If you overeat to force your weight up, you will lose it back. When you first connect and give permission with eating, your weight may be a bit variable, especially if up to this time you've been under eating or overeating. But please know your weight will stabilize. When you are competent with your eating, your weight will be right for you. Being competent with your eating helps you gain confidence and comfort with your eating and with your hunger. As you develop eating competence, you'll want to be prepared to resist interference and protect yourself so you can hang on to your competence with eating. Negative messages about eating, food, and weight are all around you. Learn to identify and ignore these messages. They can undermine you being a competent eater. This includes messages that you impose on yourself. For example, saying to yourself, I shouldn't eat that, or indulging in weight talk can be traumatic. The trauma is all the negative feelings that go along with food restriction, being constantly hungry, being preoccupied with what to eat or not to eat, being demoralized when your weight stays the same. Being a competent eater and feeding yourself faithfully lets you eat enjoyably and well. You feed yourself faithfully by establishing a structure of meals and snacks each day, and you tune in and pay attention to your eating. A bonus, of course, is that competent eaters do better medically, nutritionally, emotionally, and socially. Being competent with eating also means that you can eat all kinds of foods. But the good food, bad food monkey on your back can send you out of control when you want to eat certain foods. Give yourself permission to connect with these foods. You will find yourself becoming calm around them rather than being a big temptation. At first, you may eat a lot, but soon the newness will wear off and you will eat less sometimes, more and other, the same as you do with other foods. Giving yourself permission to eat these foods will allow them to become neutral. And once you are comfortable with how to eat, what to eat will fall into place. You may enjoy planning, shopping, and cooking and use it for fun and relaxation. 
On the other hand, you may want to do as little as possible to get the job done. However you feel about it is okay. Being confident and eating competent means being deliberate about feeding yourself. It means that you seek food rather than avoid it. Don't wait till you're hungry to think about it or you'll just grab something you might not enjoy. Be intentional and pay attention to cravings. You don't have to give in to every eating impulse, but do pay attention to cravings that keep coming back. Eating competently encourages eating a nutritionally adequate diet made up of a variety of foods. As you tune into your eating, you will notice that you'll get tired of eating the same food all the time, and you'll start looking for variety. You'll find yourself taking an interest in food, being more comfortable with unfamiliar food, and gradually getting so you enjoy a few new foods. You'll also want to make planning your friend, not your enemy. Use planning to make it easier to feed yourself. You abuse planning when you make your meals complicated and pile on so much work you can't sustain the effort, or when you say, I shouldn't eat that, or it isn't good for me. As a person living with diabetes, the tenets of being a competent eater apply to you. You can eat foods you enjoy. You just need to pay particular attention to maintaining structure. As you know, it's all about balance. Living with diabetes means that your body has access to only so much insulin at a time. This is true whether you are managing with diet alone, taking medication to help your body's insulin work better, or injecting insulin. Structure helps you balance your food intake with your available insulin and your activity to keep your blood sugar within a stable range that helps you feel good. Skimping at one meal and overdoing it at another gives you lows then highs in blood sugar. You can have good tasting, filling, and sustaining meals and snacks. Your diabetes care team can help you understand how different nutrients behave in your body, which can help you in making food choices. For example, you can slow down the release of sugar in your body from sweets by having them with other foods at a meal rather than on their own. So while this has been a brief overview of what it means to have a positive relationship with food as it relates to eating competence and diabetes, I appreciate that after watching this video, you might feel more conflicted about your eating and you may wonder what to do next. Perhaps a good place to start is to think differently about food, health, and weight. Optimism, self-trust, and a sense of adventure are healthier for you in guiding your eating than negativity, self-denial, and avoidance. In our weight-obsessed culture, eating competence can be challenging, but be reassured that trust is better than control. And remember that eating competence supports wellness. Competent eaters do better medically and nutritionally, have more stable body weights, and feel good about their bodies. With eating, as in life, competent eaters are tuned in and responsive to information coming from within and use that information to guide them in taking care of themselves. The joy of eating and trust in your body guide you um, requires nurturing. Be kind to yourself and remember your self-care with eating can help you through the ups and downs of life. In summary, a positive relationship with food and being competent with your eating is possible and rewarding. It may be easy for you or you may require some work. As a start, you'll want to feed yourself faithfully by developing a meal and snack routine that works for you and that includes foods that you truly enjoy. You'll want to take time to connect with your eating by slowing down, paying attention, and telling yourself, it's all right to eat. You'll also wanna be prepared for interference from negative messages around you, including ne negative messages you impose on yourself. You also may want to reach out for help from trained eating competence professionals, as it isn't always easy changing long-standing attitudes and behaviors. 
It's also important to discuss any concerns or potential changes to your eating with your diabetes care team. I'll conclude with a quote from Ellen Satter. When the joy goes out of eating, nutrition suffers. Thank you for watching and please feel free to reach out to the Ellen Satter Institute with your questions at support at ellensatterinstitute.org and visit the website to learn more about eating competence and joyful eating.